What's cracking, guys? Omar Esau here. Got a very cool video today. I have a special guest, Alan Thrall. You may have heard of him. If not, you're about to. He's a very smart guy. I like his channel a lot. He puts out consistently great content, uh, you know, of the informative kind. This video today is all about shoulder health. Plus, let's be honest, fell long hair, brother. You gotta take care of each other. It's a long, cold, lonely world out there. Gotta fend for each other. Anyways, he's got a video today all about shoulder health. So if your shoulders are feeling banged up, he explains why that might be the case, what you can do about it, and gives a whole slew of exercises for you to do. Make sure if you like this video to like this damn video and check out Alan's channel. The link is going to be in the description. For now, I'll let Alan take it over. What's up everyone? In this video, I'm going to talk to you guys about shoulder pain, what's causing it, and hopefully how to fix it. The shoulder joint is a very shallow ball and socket joint. Because it's so shallow, it makes it very mobile. However, that also makes it very vulnerable to injury. Inflammation, tendonitis, and shoulder impingement are all common nagging injuries that plague a lot of people, especially those of us who lift weights. So what causes this pain? A lot of people blame their shoulder pain on movements. Bench press messes up my shoulders, bro. Overhead press hurts my shoulders, so you know that means it's bad for you, so I don't even do it. If that's the case, the bench press and overhead press are both bad for your shoulders, then how do you explain why thousands of people can bench press and overhead press with zero shoulder pain? I'm here to tell you that the movement is not the problem, you are. Aside from poor technique on these lifts, I'm willing to bet that the root cause of your shoulder pain is poor shoulder alignment, tightness, and weaknesses. More on this later. Another thing that people like to blame their shoulder pain on is past injuries or structural abnormalities. Rotator cuff tears, worn down cartilage, bone spurs, etc. Don't get me wrong, these can cause pain, but oftentimes it's not the problem. Consider this, several studies have shown that many people have structural abnormalities, but show no sign of shoulder pain. One study did ultrasound scans on 237 people with no shoulder pain. 41 of them had a torn rotator cuff and at least one shoulder. Four had full thickness tears in both shoulders. Another study took MRI scans on 96 subjects with no shoulder pain and found that 34% of them had rotator cuff tears. And another study took MRI scans on 100 different subjects with no shoulder pain and found that 22 had partial rotator cuff tears, 14 had complete tears. 76% of them had some degree of shoulder arthritis and 37% had bone spurs. And they all had no shoulder pain. What the heck is going on here? Tightness weakness, lack of mobility, and poor shoulder function is what's going on here. You see, these studies, along with many others, prove that it is possible to have a fully functioning, pain-free shoulder, even with structural abnormalities. Yeah, bro, I tore something in my shoulder back when I played high school football. Linebacker. It's never been the same since, so you know, that's why I don't overhead press. Really? I'm pretty sure your god-awful posture and your terrible mobility is what's preventing you from pressing weight overhead. Not a slight tear you had 10 years ago. So apparently there are other problems going on when someone has shoulder pain other than just structural abnormalities. What other problems? Tightness and weakness. I'm gonna show you how to stretch tight muscles and strengthen weak ones that may be causing you shoulder pain. A healthy shoulder is mobile and stable. Increasing flexibility in and around the shoulder joint will improve its range of motion. Strengthening weak or lagging muscles will create a stable shoulder joint. To start out, let's find out if in fact your shoulder is tight. Keeping your scapula depressed or down, place your hand behind your back and keep it straight across your body. Feel some tightness in your shoulder? Now, supinate your hand by placing your palm flat against your body. If your shoulder is very tight, your scapula will wing or poke out. Your shoulder blade is now oriented front to back instead of left to right. This is wrong. You need to be able to move your shoulder joint in the presence of a stable scapula. Here's a way of testing mobility and proper shoulder alignment that can be directly applied to the overhead press. While standing with your arms at your sides, keep your shoulder blades packed down. Now, raise your arm up as high as you can while maintaining a neutral lumbar spine. If your shoulder is tight and you feel your shoulder blade moving, and your trap shrugging, or your lower back hyperextending, 
you lack the shoulder mobility needed to correctly overhead press. This is the reason why a lot of people experience lower back pain when pressing weight overhead. As they lift their arms overhead, their range of motion runs out and they are forced to move at the lumbar spine. This can also be caused by tight lats. So now that we've established the fact that you have tight shoulders, let's talk about why your shoulders are so dang tight in the first place. Slouching, sitting, Facebooking, gaming, driving, pooping are all usually performed with poor posture. Then we go into the gym and train our chest, biceps, front delts, abs, and every muscle we can see in the mirror. Even the movements that are supposed to cure problems end up only making the situation worse. So all of these anterior muscles shorten and become tight. Some muscles become overdeveloped in relation to opposing muscles, and this pulls our shoulder joint out of proper alignment. Once your shoulders are not in proper alignment, your thoracic spine is not in proper alignment. This leads to your cervical spine not being in proper alignment either. Correct posture and shoulder alignment will put your cheekbones directly over your collarbones. Next time you're people watching at the mall, notice how many people walk around with that forward head posture. Cheekbones way out in front of their collarbones. I know it's hard to see with all this man, but their cheekbones are way out in front of their collarbones. This is severely affecting the muscles in your head, neck, and upper back, as well as your ability to attract the opposite sex. Poor circulation, tension headaches, neck pain, trouble breathing are all gonna be symptoms of poor posture. Getting sidetracked. All right, back to the video. Internal rotation of the shoulders is another huge problem that can cause a lot of shoulder discomfort. Internal rotation can be identified by the knuckle dragging caveman look. Palms facing backwards rather than towards your body. With your arms relaxed by your side, stick your thumbs out. Do they point towards your body? If they do, you have internal rotation of the shoulders. Your thumbs should point straight forward, indicating healthy shoulder alignment. In order to create a flexible shoulder joint, we need to stretch the shoulder through its four basic planes of motion. Flexion, internal rotation, external rotation, and horizontal adduction. For the first stretch, grab a band or a post and stretch your shoulders and lats. Put your hips in a posterior pelvic tilt to make the stretch more intense. For this next stretch, grab a band or a towel and put it over your shoulder and behind your back. Grab it with the other hand and gently pull the band or towel up. Try your best to keep your scapula in place. Do not allow it to wing. Next, place your hand against a post or door jam and turn your body away. Lastly, reach your arm across your body. Make sure you keep your shoulder blade retracted. Do not allow it to protract. Perform these stretches every day, multiple times a day. Hold each stretch for 45 to 90 seconds. The majority of people who lift weights and have shoulder pain have weak rotator cuff muscles. The four rotator cuff muscles are the supraspinatus, its primary function is abduction, the infraspinatus and teres minor, they both share the same job of external rotation, and the subscapularis, its primary function is internal rotation. We're not going to worry too much about strengthening our internal rotators because these muscles are usually overdeveloped. Now, I could show you some lame ass five pound dumbbell exercises that a physical therapist might prescribe to a 60 year old lady who just fell and hurt herself. But the reality is you would probably do it every day for a couple days, then you would do it every other day, then you would do it whenever you happen to remember, and then eventually you would just drop it all together and I don't blame you. If you're like me, you wanna get in the gym, pick up 300 pounds and put it overhead. Ain't got no time to mess around with five pound dumbbells. It's hard enough to make the time to warm up and stretch, so I'm not gonna take 10 more minutes of your lifting time by telling you to get into weird positions and flap around on a bench with a colorful rubber-coated dumbbell. Instead, I'm gonna show you what I personally do. I superset my main lift sets with one band exercise complex. This way, I'm doing easy band work during my rest periods. I'm not at the gym any longer than I would be if I wasn't doing these exercises. Most people play on their phone while they're resting anyway, so you might as well do something productive with your downtime. You're gonna to need to purchase, find, or steal a band with very light resistance. Take it with you to the gym and perform this exercise immediately following your main lift sets. So, you would do a set of bench press and then immediately do this exercise. Some of you are already familiar with this exercise. It's called the YTWL exercise. Attach a band to a rack, post, or barbell at about shoulder height. With your shoulder blades retracted and down, grab the band 
and raise your arms overhead, slightly angling them out. Do not let your shoulder blades move and do not shrug your traps up. This is the Y part of YTWLs. Stay tight and keep slight tension on the band when returning to the starting position. Do not collapse back to the start and lose all tension. Now, keeping your arms straight, pull the band horizontally. This is the T in YTWLs. Next, pull the band back and put your humerus at a 45 degree angle. Keep your wrists flat. From the back, your arms will form the letter W. Make sure to keep your scapula retracted and down. Lastly, pull the band back so that your humerus is 90 degrees from your body and your forearms are perpendicular to your humerus. Keeping your elbows in this position, rotate your hands back. This is the L part of YTWLs. I like to perform these exercises every training session for four sets of three reps. YTWL is one rep. Along with YTWLs, I would still highly suggest incorporating some big pulling movements into your routine. Chin-ups, barbell rows, dumbbell rows, inverted rows, and don't be afraid to treat them as strength movements. If you're gonna do some heavy triples on bench press, why not do some heavy triples on chins? Here are some pushing to pulling strength standards that you might wanna strive for. See if you can perform one pull up with as much weight as you can bench press. Make sure to include your body weight and the total amount of weight that you're pulling up. So for example, if a 200 pound man can bench press 300 pounds, he should strive to be able to do one pull up with 100 pounds strapped to his waist. If you can dumbbell bench press 100s for five reps, you should be able to do dumbbell rows for five clean reps with those same hundreds. If you can bench press your own body weight, you should be able to perform 10 inverted rows, chest to bar with your feet up on a bench. I've found that people who meet these standards generally have no shoulder problems. These are just my personal standards. They are not something you need to live and die by. I understand that there are exceptions to these standards. There are 350 pound men who can bench press 700 pounds and I don't expect them to do a pull up with 350 pounds strapped to their waist. So please don't get bent out of shape if you don't agree with these standards. Just realize that as your pressing strength increases, your pulling strength should also increase. So that's it guys. This was my long drawn out way of saying that you're probably experiencing shoulder pain because you're tight, immobile, weak, underdeveloped, overdeveloped, asymmetrical, or all of the above. Use the stretches and exercises mentioned in this video to create a stable, mobile, and pain-free shoulder girdle. I hope you guys learned something. Thanks for watching, and always remember... Tread on ten. Well guys, that's all the time we have. In 2016, I gotta make it down to Alan's gym. He's now doing weightlifting, which I think is awesome. Make sure you check out his channel. Link is in the description. If you like the video, make sure to like the damn video, and I'll be seeing all you guys, my rascals, in that next one. Peace.